Hello, everyone. I'm Justin Dimmel. I'm an assistant professor in the School of Learning and Teaching. I'm joined here today by Camden Bach, who is a doctoral candidate that has been working with me at the University of Maine since 2016. We are very excited to have this opportunity to share our work with you during the University of Maine's virtual homecoming for the fall of 2020. And what we're going to be talking about today is the work we've been doing to explore mathematics spatially in immersive virtual environments. I want to give some mathematical background for the problem that we are working on. I'm going to share my screen and I'll take us back. This will maybe be a bit of a stroll down memory lane for any of you that remember your geometry classroom or maybe you're currently teaching geometry or maybe you have children that are in geometry. But something that happens, especially in geometry classrooms, uh, we have diagrams that we want to represent spatial figures, volume occupying figures, figures that are three dimensional in other words. And so for example, here, here's a diagram a set of diagrams that I pulled up on Google to illustrate the concept of skew lines. So skew lines are these funny kinds of lines that don't intersect, but they're not parallel. Uh, in, in a plane, that's not possible, but in space, there's enough room for the lines to not intersect, but also not be in the same plane. And the way that this typically gets described, you can see some of these diagrams here um, we are flattening three-dimensional space into two dimensions. And so there's this funny thing where in order to know, uh, do your students understand the concept that you're explaining, you kind of have to know what they are seeing. Do they see this flattened two-dimensional representation of a spatial thing in the same way that a mathematical expert might see it, where they recognize that the, the various dotted lines or the various uh, perspective angles are there to convey this sense of depth in space. So an alternative to imagining what skew lines might look like by reconstructing them from flattened two-dimensional images, we could actually immerse a student in a virtual space where the space itself can be the canvas for making inscriptions. It's almost like having a three-dimensional uh, whiteboard or chalkboard. Uh, and Camden now is gonna show us what it's like to step into an environment. And so we're gonna be seeing this environment from Camden's perspective. What we're going to see right now is we're gonna see Camden put the headset on, and then we are gonna see what he sees as he explores this immersive environment that Camden helped uh, develop along with undergraduate students uh, working uh, in, com in computer science. And this is something that we've been working on uh, since 2016. It's an environment that we call the line and sphere environment. And it was uh, developed right here in the School of Learning and Teaching uh, with UMaine uh, undergraduate and graduate students. This work was supported uh, with grants from the Spencer Foundation, with grants from the Maine Space Grant Consortium, and with internal funds from the College of Education and Human Development and the, the Office of the Vice President for Research at the University of Maine. So uh, Camden is in this environment, and as Camden walks around and looks around, it's, it's for him, it's like walking around and looking around in the world. There's really no difference as far as like, as he turns his head, he, he sees a new, a new part of this virtual environment, just as when we turn our heads in the real world, we see new parts of the real world. And um, in the middle of the environment, there's a shelf and this shelf has some tools on it. And one of the tools on it is a small green segment that is the tool that generates lines. So what Camden is going to do is Camden is going to grab uh, a line from the shelf and you can see that this generates a line um, that it appears to kind of extend off to the horizon as Camden looks along the line. This is another really interesting uh, affordance of these virtual environments. 
there's no reason for your lines to appear bounded because we're not going to reach the edge of the chalkboard, so to say. The line can just continue off into the distance indefinitely. So uh, Camden has, has one line and now he's going to grab a different line. And we're going to use these two lines to uh, spatially investigate this idea of skewness. And remember, skewness is what I was showing with those Google images a, a, a few minutes ago. So Camden is positioning these lines so that from uh, one perspective, uh, they appear to, to cross each other. And you know, this is not unlike what happens when we have to represent skew lines in two dimensions. We have to somehow uh, create some sense of depth even though the images are, are flat. And so there's you know, various tricks that you can do with the two dimensional diagram to do that. So here, we see these lines that appear to cross. But now what Camden can do is he can move his body in space to change his perspective on the lines. And as he does that, we can see that no, these lines do not intersect. In fact, there is a space between the lines. And so the lines are in different planes. And this is what makes the lines skew. And so the, the space that gets flattened and that gets compressed when we try to represent spatial things in two dimension, this becomes an active space where learners immersed in these environments can explore mathematical ideas as we see Camden exploring the idea of skew lines. So that's one uh, kind of set of affordances that we have investigated through some research studies that were recently published in Digital Experiences in Mathematics Education. Uh, we'll include information about those studies uh, at the end of this video for anyone that would like to read more about them and learn more about our work. Uh, one, so one uh, final uh, technique that we can demonstrate here is uh, a different tool that can only be realized in a virtual immersive space. And so this is a tool for, for making spheres, uh, a spatial compass tool. Think, think back to your time in geometry when you had to draw circles using uh, a plane compass. So you would you know, anchor the point, you'd have a little pencil and you'd spin the compass uh, around on, on a piece of paper. Uh, if you were like me and had clumsy hands, it would always slip and the, the circle would never be quite as perfect as you like. But here in this virtual space, we can extend that analogy of, of the plane compass where you are um, revolving a point around a point to inscribe uh, a one dimensional circle. And what we're gonna see Camden do is we are gonna see Camden uh, take this uh, spatial compass tool, which looks like a, a blue wheel. And we're gonna see him position this blue wheel uh, around a line segment. And so he has uh, taken a point, he has extended that point into a line segment, and now he's going to position that compass uh, at one end of the line segments. He's going to anchor the other point of the compass at the other end, and this is going to create a, a, a blue circle, the, the circumference of a, of a circle in space. And the final step is Camden is going to spin that blue wheel, and when he spins that wheel, that circle will turn through space, and as it turns, it traces out a sphere. And so in the, in the one-dimensional case, we have a point uh, revolving around a point to make a one-dimensional line. Here we have a one-dimensional circle uh, revolving in space to create the surface, the two-dimensional surface of a sphere. So this is a, a very exciting tool that uh, can't really exist except in a virtual environment like the environment that Camden is in. Uh, we can see he can change the size of the sphere, the sphere very easily just by using his hands uh, to grab the points and move them closer together or further apart. And so we see this as a first step toward uh, creating um, a, an environment where students can make a plane and sphere constructions which is a spatial analog of the, the compass and straight edge constructions you might remember from your time in geometry. Well, thank you all very much for spending a few minutes with us here at the University of Maine Emory Lab. We're very excited to share our work with you. And we hope that next fall, you'll be able to come by the lab in person 
uh, for a tour of uh, these environments and other projects that we're working on. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, go, go Black Bears.